Hello! Hello everybody, it's Julia Mazur with Simply She Stamps and sorry I'm a little couple minutes late. I had a light issue and unfortunately one of my lights is not working so hopefully it's not uh, too dark on here for you all. Maybe you are joining me uh, in person, not in person, live I should say. If you are, you can um, comment and hopefully I can see the comments and see that you're joining me live or maybe you're watching the replay. Looks like we might have a couple people on here today. Maybe you were a lucky one who got some supplies in the mail. My customers that um, received the um, mini catalog, mine's well loved, all my pages marked. Um, I sent you some supplies for some make and take cards during our virtual class here. Okay, live chat. Again, if you have questions that come up or anything, po uh, post them in the chat. I will be happy to answer them. And if I don't get to them live, then I will um, get them on the replay. I see Tracy there. Hello, Tracy. Um, if you did get some supplies in the mail, be careful because there are three card supplies in there and some little pieces and hopefully all of them made them to your house okay. And the first thing we're going to do is make a card. Okay, we are going to use the Country Floral Lane. Now unfortunately the punch is um, not in stock anymore. It's coming back in April. But the stamp set is still available and the beautiful papers. And that's what I just loved about this suite were the um, colors and the papers. And then my favorite kind of embellishment, they are adhesive back sequins, they're pastel. So we have a petal pink, a balmy blue and a gold, and they kind of take on other colors. So you don't just have to use them on projects with those colors. And I'm gonna show you the beautiful designer series paper. And one thing I wanted to do was to um, send you some paper because they are just beautiful in person. Oh, good. I see Joan and Michelle and Kaylee. Yay. I'm so glad that you are able to make it live today. Okay. So our first card, let me pull out my supplies here. This is what our card is going to look like. I think I'm going to take it out of my envelope so I don't have that shine on it. Um, let me show you a couple things that we're going to use. We did not use the stamp set, but I did use the punch and I punched out. Sorry about that. I'm a little, you know, losing that light just kind of threw me for a loop. <laughs> let me pull out the paper here. This really is beautiful paper that there's bicycles. So it's not just for Valentine's bicycles and the beautiful balmy blue and oh I think it's mint macaron and the petal pink sorry that I have all these little pieces but these are the there's a whole sheet of just these hearts and I punch those out if you don't have the punch you can just fussy cut them out some people find the fussy cutting nice and um relaxing Oh, my heart's are upside down here. Sorry about this. This is a one set of paper I didn't have prepped and ready to go to show you. <laughs> um, beautiful hearts, little X's and O's, hearts and kisses. Okay, I think I'm missing a couple pieces there, but I'll pull out um, another, the whole full set in a little bit. So I just wanted to show you the beautiful paper and you have the supplies to make this card. Sorry about that. And since it was free, I was able to send you something that was pre-stamped. And I, I, this is one of my favorite stamp sets from the new mini catalog, the Something Fancy. It's a bundle. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Yes, don't, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> thank you for subscribing. Sorry, I will not get distracted. <laughs> Okay, anyhow, um, this is in the mini catalog and it is a bundle. There are labels that come with it, but I didn't get the labels. I just love mixed fonts and I love these great sayings. You matter to so many, grateful for the everyday magic of you. There's a birthday one, uh, you know, thank you and wedding. So it's a really great um, stamp set. That's why I used it with all of our samples today that we are making our make and takes. All right, so we have a mint macaron card base. I actually have a petal pink one here because I think I 
put my uh, mint macaron card base somewhere else. So you can do whatever you'd like because this designer series paper has two sides, okay? So there's plain hearts on the back or the beautiful florals. And I think I'm gonna use the florals just like I did on the sample, but I just have a different card base there. That's a petal pink card base. So you will have, I should tell you what all the things you need to throw, um, pull out of your sample pack. The mint macaron card base, this fancy label that's stamped, and then you should have a large heart, two little leaves, and a small heart. So I'll wait just a minute for you to get all your supplies for this first card. And this piece of designer series paper is three by four, and you can put it on straight or crooked on purpose. This one's crooked on purpose. I'll do this one straight so you can see the difference. Um, and with our make and takes today, these are great card maps. So there's so many designer series paper papers in the celebration brochure and in the mini catalog. Um, so I wanted to show you some easy ways to use those, okay? Now my card here is a little um, stepped up, if you will. I use the adhesive back sequence there, okay? And I always forget the name of this punch, but it is one of my favorites. It's in the annual catalog. I'm pulling it out so I can tell you what it is because with Celebration, you get a free Celebration product with a qualifying order, which is either $50 for level one or $100. So I'm just trying to give you some ideas of things you could purchase so you can get your favorite Celebration items. So this is the Decorative Circle Punch. Well, let me get this on camera. Decorative Circle Punch. And it's really great because punches are a quick and easy way to get accents or labels. Okay, I think I need my phone folder. This is another great tool. If you don't have one, you get a nice crisp crease. Okay, and I'm using dimensionals. If you don't have dimensionals at home, you can just use your favorite adhesive. These are stuck on there. I don't know why. Let me grab another. There they are, hiding, of course. Okay, so is everybody with me? I'm gonna kind of see, check comments here. Do you have your supplies for the first card here? Hi, Leanne. Okay, so my petal pink on camera looks kind of peachy orange. Very interesting how everything transfers. Oh, and I'm sorry about my uh, Band-Aid. I had a little accident with the coffee box <laughs> last weekend. I was kind of, I got beat up last weekend on my hand, so I apologize for my Band-Aid. Okay, so we have our two hearts and our leaves and our label that we have nothing fancy, just love stamped on there. And I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of mine. If you don't have dimensionals, you can just use adhesive. Turn all these things over. Um, for here, I'm not gonna put a dimensional. I'm just gonna put some adhesive, but I am gonna put a dimensional on this part because it's gonna lay on top of that. So I don't need to put two dimensionals on there. And then my, oops, my leaf, I'm gonna put a dimensional on one. And I think I did, I popped up that one. And I should probably get my minis for that. Well, I don't have my minis, but you know, use all the parts of your dimensional pack. So I'm just gonna tear off this half dimensional, which is on the edge. And I think I'm going to use that one for this heart, too. I, you know what? I don't even think I put a dimensional on the heart. I just used the adhesive to stick it on the label. Okay, everybody's good. Hi, Judy. Everybody found all their supplies. I'm sorry if things kind of fell out there. Um, check on the ground if you lost something. <laughs> you don't have all these parts. Okay. So I'm going to put this one on straight. I'm gonna use my grid paper. Sometimes with my new glasses, things kind of end up crooked. So I'm gonna use the grid paper to help me put my label on. I'm gonna use some of my adhesive to put on that heart so it sticks down to my label. And that's gonna go there. And I'm gonna take my other leaf 
And you might have different colors because um, on that paper, the leaves come in different colors. And that one's gonna go right there. You just gotta play around to sketch what, which, what you would like. Another thing that might be easy with this heart is using a glue dot. I think I'll grab that. So I can just stick it on right there, pull it up, and put it on my label, just like that. And that doesn't need to be um, popped up or anything. You could if you wanted to, but I'm okay. So here's the stepped up version with the embellishments. It's amazing I don't have any kind of twine or ribbon on there because usually I throw some of that on there. <laughs> and then this is the um, up straight one, okay? The great one to mail. You know, one thing I like about these sequins because they're flat, so you can mail them easily. All right, so this is just a very simple one and then the stepped up one. Do you like the paper crooked on purpose or do you like it straight? What do you guys prefer? You know, my husband does not like the crooked things. I like the crooked things because it's, you don't have to worry so much about it being perfect. Okay, so that is our first make and take. I'm gonna show you another sample. Um, this is a sample I made with a group of my demonstrator friends using the same paper and the same punch, this beautiful petal pink ribbon in the uh, mini catalog, not the mini catalog, this is in the annual catalog. Um, so there's a lot of petal pink and balmy blue and fresh freesia throughout the celebration brochure and the mini catalog. Okay, so it's a cute little card that doesn't have anything to do with Valentine's. All right. Okay, I'm gonna set these off to the side. I will post pictures of the completed cards as well. So you can, um, if you didn't get your card done today, you can do it at another time, okay? Oh good, I'm glad you like the card, Joan. All right, so that was the um, Country Lane Suite in the mini catalog. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the celebration catalog, or brochure, I should say, and um, we'll do our other two cards in just a little bit. We're just gonna kinda go through the brochure. Okay, adorable owls. These are so cute because um, we always have a cute little stamp set with animals, I think, in our celebration brochures lately. And um, I was drawn to this because my daughter just joined a sorority and this is one of their little symbols. So I thought she would love that card. Let me show you um, the cards that I created. I stamped my owl, the cute little owl, in the tuxedo black and then I colored it in with blends, okay? And I stamped the branch. Oh, where did I put that stamp set? It is, it should be right here. <laughs> here it is. I'm gonna, I pulled out the garden birdhouses. I use this on a lot of my samples. Um, I wanted a branch for my little owls, so this one worked out pretty well. I stamped it in garden green, and then I took my old olive blend, and with your blends, don't open it over your project. I find that sometimes it splatters. So I just opened it up off camera there. Okay, so I stamped the branch in garden green and then I'm going to use the old olive blend and that's how you kind of get that different look. Now sometimes it's hard to kind of mix together stamp sets because they have a different style um, I was kind of worried about this. There is a die that's a branch that's really cute. I saw a card done with. I don't have that, so I used what I did have, and I pulled out the stamp set. You know, the snow has not started here yet, but I am anticipating it being a snowy day, and I'm looking forward to spring. <laughs> so I'm just coloring in the leaves there, and isn't that nice how quickly I can get a nice two-tone effect. I use the uh, Dark So Saffron 
for his eyes. And I'm using the bullet tip because that seems to work well for small places. I'm gonna show you a little tip too that I did later on. And I'm using the, what is this? This is the dark pumpkin pie for his beak and his little feet there. Blends are my favorite way to color because they're very forgiving. You do have to use the Tuxedo Black Memento ink because it's um, water-based. The blends are alcohol-based. You'll see that, oh, see, every piece of paper has two sides. You see that it does bleed through. Um, now I used the light crumb cake. Now our blends come in packs of two. And what I like about these alcohol markers are you don't get the lines that you can get from regular markers when you color. It might look like it when you start coloring it, but as it dries, the lines kind of disappear. And they're called blends because you can add more color. So these little owls have been very popular. If you go on Pinterest or follow any blogs, you'll see, oops, You'll see lots of um, ideas. Sorry, I made a little mistake there. I could grab my color lifter. That kind of takes care of um, the mistakes there. And I have the light soft suede. Oh, I see a question. Are the blends like a watercolor look versus regular markers? Yes, it's like getting a watercolor look without having to use a watercolor brush and ink. If you, if you have stamped with me or watched me, <laughs> you know I love the look of watercolor, but I just can't, can't do it. I have a project in a little bit to show you, and you can tell me how well I did with my, you know, true watercoloring. Um, that's why I like the blends, because you get that watercolor look very easily. Okay, so I'm colored, colored him in. This, you know, it's not... So watercoloring looking right now, but I, I'm gonna show you how you can do this and get the shading. I have a dark soft suede here. That's not gonna look really good. I'm just gonna add some more color with the same color. It dries a little bit and then you can go back and add some shading. So hopefully you can see that. Let me lift this up. Okay, you can see the difference there in the shading. There we go by his head and under his arm. I kind of did it here. And then, you know, you see the line right away, but then as it dries, that line will kind of disappear. Okay? So that's how I colored him. And my little tip, oh my gosh, I always forget about the Wink of Stella. And what this is, is it's kind of, it's, oops, hold on. There we go. <laughs> it's kind of like glitter in a marker. And I'm not a big fan of glitter because it gets all over the place, but sometimes you just need a little sparkle. So I thought the owl's eyes, you know, they kind of glow in the dark, right? When they're looking at you. And you might not be able to tell this on camera, but I'll give you my sample here. And it just adds a little teeny shimmer, okay? I have another project that uses it. So that's our little owls. These are my um, cards for my daughter, Hoot Hoot, you're so cute, for her little um, sorority. And I was very inspired by one of our artisans. Stampin' Up! chooses, oh my gosh, I think there might be 12 of them. Every year, people, demonstrators apply to be an artisan. And so they get to... Um, use products and show their works of art. So it's really great. I'm always so inspired by them. You could probably find this. This is one of the artisans from this year. Oh my gosh, I can't remember her name. But it's on the Stampin' Up! Facebook page, so you can find it. They're little three by three cards and I just loved the pool party and the look of the um, gingham ribbon here that she cut in half so you kind of get it more narrow. So I was inspired by that and you know, we case, cause it's really hard to be creative just off the bat. So sometimes, most times I'll just find a project either in the catalog or on Pinterest or these artisans 
and um, kind of go with it. So I made this into a note card instead of the three by three card. This is the Stitch with Whimsy as just a little detail. And these um, dots are embellishments in the annual catalog. And this is embossed in white on black and I just like that contrast. Oh, and this is, um, I use this for a couple projects with the owls. It is an embossing folder in the annual catalog and it really adds a nice little bit of texture. Again, if you're looking to get something from Celebration, you need a purchase, so I'm just trying to give you some ideas. Here's our annual catalog. It's the Timber 3D. We've had a few different wood grain embossing folders, so I keep forgetting the actual names of them. Um, it is a full-size one, so it fits in the regular size stamp and cut and emboss or our old Big Shot, okay? So that's a great um, embossing folder to have. And so then here I stepped this up a little bit and made a full-size card. This panel right here is the size of a note card. And so I just wanted to make a bigger card. Again, inspired by an artisan. And I'm so sorry that I forgot her name or right now. And I colored him in Pool Party and... Smoky Slate Blend. And again, my favorite embellishment, the adhesive back sequence. And this is one of the celebration offerings as well. It is a great um, sentiment stamp set and you'll see more of that in just a little bit. Again, I embossed on black with white. Okay, cute little card that I can send to someone who needs to be, you know, inspired to do something that they might be afraid to do. Okay, so next up are the carrots. And I saw these carrots and I'm like, carrots? Why are there carrots? And you know, there's farm designer series paper. So there's kind of like a little theme going on. But I was inspired by a former artisan, Tatiana Creative is her website and she's out of Australia. And oh my gosh, I just loved her cards. So this uses the Mango Melody cardstock and um, Mango Melody ink and pumpkin pie, old olive and shaded spruce. This tag, the tag is in the annual catalog and this is the soft sea foam. So I really love the color, light colored cardstock. Okay, and this is the Parakeet Party metallic ribbon that's in the annual catalog. Parakeet Party is a uh, in color, and the pearls are the iridescent pearls. So I stamped it. I just, you know, totally cased her card. Casey, casing is, you know, copy and selectively edit. I didn't really edit anything on here, and I don't, I so appreciate that she shared on her website. And um, she mentioned making it an easel card, and that's what I did. So you can give this to someone, and then they can stick it on their desk. And so they can always be reminded and just have a cute little card on their desk. I just stamped some the little bunch of carrots and popped it up, and you score halfway down on the front there, and that's how you can make your easel card. So that's the carrot card. I was just really drawn to these cards. And here's another one that she made. There's no one quite like you with the purple carrot. Nice vellum to kind of go over the um, stamped background. It kind of like makes it a little more subtle. So those are the carrots. I am really liking them now. <laughs> I was kind of surprised with the carrots. Anybody else look at the celebration brochure and go, what's up with the carrots? But it is cute with the thanks a bunch. I like the sample in the catalog too. All right, so there we go with the carrots. Everybody with me still? Any questions? I'm gonna kind of take a break here and look to see in my um, comments there. Okay, next up we have, oh my goodness, the Dainty Flowers Designer Series paper. In the brochure, you only really get to see the um, flowers, the dainty flowers. And there are some beautiful samples here, but oh my gosh, I have to show you the full size of the designer series paper because there are some patterns in there that are just absolutely gorgeous and you wouldn't even know. And I do have some samples, so I'll show you those in just a second. I think this definitely is my favorite designer series paper in the celebration catalog. Look at this beautiful sheet of watercolored and splattered 
um, paper. You can't even see it really. I mean, there is one sample in the brochure, but you know, it really does no, no um, justice. Oh, Joan, you love the carrots? Oh, good. Oh, and Judy, yes, I saw you did get the carrots. Yeah, and car carrots are gonna be so cute. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Beautiful um, watercolor wash here. And the back side, you may, if you're on Pinterest, you'll see lots and lots of samples with this. It's a great thing that you can just cut out. And again, I used the something fancy with this and the fresh freesia. And I just cut this out, stamped in the middle, added some a layer behind it, added some twine, I'm sorry, linen thread bow, and the butterflies. Where did I put my butterflies? They are the adhesive backed brass butterflies. They came out last spring and they're just so great because they're flat and they just add a little bit of shine. Okay, very, very simple card there. Okay, this beautiful piece and the green. I'm just gonna kind of go through them. And then this is the back side. So nice, soft, subtle colors and solids more flowers and another splatter sheet and um i do love these color combinations too so let me show you some other projects I got the good you do that and then um again i use the bird houses i pulled out that stamp set to make a background because i don't have there is a coordinating stamp set and bundle Dainty Delight Bundle, and it has um, the flowers and the dyes. It's in the mini catalog. So in a lot of these samples here, you'll see that, but I don't have that bundle. So I pulled out what I do have, and I had the birdhouses, and um, it paired really, really well. And there are some greetings in there. This is the Starry Sky ribbon from the annual catalog. Here is another card, and these Greetings I did get from the Garden Birdhouses. It just pairs really well with this paper, okay? And where's my other one? Oh, it's in there. And here is the card that I made with the Ranunculus Romance. I think I am uh, not pronouncing that correctly, and maybe Judy can... <laughs> give me a little tutorial. Um, this came out last spring too, and I do love it. And I love the look of collage cards. And so with that watercolor wash and splatter paper, I just took the stamp set and the starry sky ink pad and just stamped a bunch of the images. And then I got this beautiful collage card. I'm feeling I need something right here. I don't know what yet, or just leave it just like that because, um, let the paper do the work. All right, so it is just gorgeous paper. I would definitely get some because you'll use it for so many projects. Okay, and I'm gonna show you something here in the brochure. It uses that paper and I wanna show you how to get this look. So what I have is I cut a piece down and I took my old olive ink pad and a blending brush, which in the mini catalog, there's little mini blending brushes now. And this is kind of like how we used to um, use the sponges we had to add some shading, but you don't get as much of, you get a more blended look. So they're beautiful. This is like all the rage now in the paper crafting world. Okay, and you'll see that it comes off you want to start off so you don't get kind of the, I don't know what, splotchy look. And you can just bring it up and get a softer shade of green. And then pick up more color if you want it darker down here. So that's how uh, we did that sample. And on this card, I added the little bird from the birdhouses. I thought he was cute. And again embossed with white on a dark color cardstock. And this paper really is just so beautiful and so versatile, okay? Great for spring. Who is ready for spring? Oh, and I'm so glad I said that right. Thank you, Judy, for helping me out there. <laughs> 
Okay, so that is Dainty Delight. Dainty Flowers, sorry. Dainty Delight is the bundle in the mini catalog. Okay, moving on. What do we have next? I think it's the farm, yes. So let me show you the farm paper. Um, not quite sure that I would be making very many cards with this paper. I love the colors because it's so bold, but you know what? This is great for scrapbooking. You know, even though my kids are old, I still have pictures of being on the farm for, you know, apple picking or pumpkin picking. And great for, you know, Easter. These are just so cute. And I do love the chicken wire. So the back, you know, the B sides that are just kind of patterns. So like I said, great for scrapbooking or, oh my gosh, you could put this in a frame that we have a new alphabet set die and you could like um, spell out someone's name and make it framed art in their room or in your home. Um, I think I might have to save this and use it for some scrapbook pages. You know, I don't know if you saw my events, but I do have a Cinco de Mayo scrapbooking night. It's going to be at Twigs celebrating Cinco de Mayo with tacos. <laughs> You'll find more information on my website, which is jmazer.stampinup.net. Okay. So that is the day at the farm paper, beautiful colors, sending supports. This is a great sentiment stamp set. You saw that I used the courage. Um, it's okay not to feel okay. It's cling. So that means it's the red rubber. And then you put the label on the back. I do prefer red rubber stamps. I don't know if you noticed, but in the mini catalog, there are some stamp sets that you have an option to get cling or the photopolymer, which is the clear, okay? So I use that one. This would be great with this other paper, which this is our next um, make and take that we're gonna do. It's the Favorite Flowers Designer Series paper. It coordinates with the Fragrant Flowers Bundle in the mini catalog. I got a little glare there, sorry. I don't have that bundle, um, but and I wasn't so keen on this paper, but oh my gosh, in person, that's why I had to send it to you to make a card, okay? So you have the purple or the purple with the um, oranges, the calypso coral, and the petal pink again. So it really is just beautiful in person. And again, another card map using designer series paper. So you can make some quick and easy cards. The bundle has a die and the die, there are some dies that cut out these flowers or you can fussy cut. If you don't know what fussy cut means, that means just cutting out with your little paper snips. Um, on camera here, this looks really dark, um, but, and it is dark, but there is a lot of purple in the flower. There really is. Ooh, that's kind of shimmery. Just wanted to show you all the pieces, again, petal pink, and more of the multicolor, fresh freesia, one of my favorite colors. It is an in color, so it might not be around forever. I think this is the last few months of it. If you love fresh freesia, you might wanna stock up on it. That's another thing you could use for your celebration um, celebration order. Okay, so we are going to make another card. It is using the Fresh Freesia. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I really didn't do so well here. I don't know what happened, but I don't have my card bases. You want to pull out the Fresh Freesia card base. I'm just going to grab my trimmer here so I can cut a piece. I thought I was so prepared. I have like a new tower of drawers that I put all my projects in, but you know, always, always something with me. <laughs> okay. So you want to pull out the fresh freesia and then you have 
a piece of designer series paper. It might be all purple flowers, or you might have a mixture of the fresh freesia and the calypso coral and the petal pink. Okay. And again, you have a stamped greeting. I thought this paper was beautiful for sympathy cards. I think it would also pair very nicely with the sending support if you don't like the coordinating stamp set. And um, you'll notice that I stamped the sentiment on the designer series paper. So that doesn't always work, but some of these patterns are so subtle that um, it makes something a great background for the sentiment rather than just a piece of white or you know stamped in black and embossed like we did before. Okay. Um, Again, if you follow me, you know how much I love designer series paper. And when I get a 12 by 12 piece and I don't know where to start, I'll just cut off a four inch strip. And that's just a nice way to start. And this card is very simple. Again, I'm going to use my bone folder because I didn't have that pre scored I'm going to grab my um, adhesive here. And you'll see that having a piece at four inches, I have a nice frame around my designer series paper. Let me kind of fold it this way. If you wanted to even cut it not at five and a half, you could cut it at five and a quarter, and then you would have a frame all around that piece. But I do like the look of um, just the side frame. So it's just your personal choice, what you feel like you would like to do for that card. Oops, I just ran out of adhesive. Let me grab my other one. There we go. Just a little bit in each corner. Sometimes if you have a big piece like this, you might want to use the liquid glue because it's got a little more wiggle room. Okay, and then I think I'm going to use this one. You matter to so many. Maybe I sent you one that had a different greeting. And I might have cut this with my scissors, but we also have a punch. And let me pull that out. Hold on. <laughs> this is a label punch in the annual catalog. Lock. And you have the little flag banner punch and um, this edge. And there's three different sizes, I believe. Yep. Nope, this is a bit too big, so I did cut it by hand. And I'll show you the little trick for that. I'm going to use my paper snips, and I'm just going to snip down the center and then go from corner to the end of where I snipped there. And that's how you get a little banner. Now, sometimes I don't do so well, so that's why I do like that punch. Okay, and then we're just gonna use dimensionals. Of course, I moved them and now, there we go, hard to find. If you don't have dimensionals, you can just put it down flat with your adhesive. Did everybody find all the supplies for this card easily? Okay, and then you just put it like that. Now on this sample, I did use some of the Fresh Freesia ribbon. This is in the annual catalog. I just wrapped it around this piece of designer series paper before I stuck it on the card base. Oops. All right, so. I did use some Wink of Stella on my flowers. It's a great way, again, if you want to send something through the mail. I don't even know if you can see it very well. Um, if you want to send something through the mail and you don't want to put too many embellishments, okay, and I just went around, and you do have to push a little bit to get... I always forget my, about my Wink of Stella. Oh, this is a brand new one. Let me grab the other one. And um, you'll notice on these flowers, the ends are lighter. And so all I did was I just brushed a little bit of 
pastella on the ends. Okay, and again, you probably can't see on camera. And you don't even have to do all the flowers. I just did some of the flowers. And it just adds a little bit of sparkle. And again, a little bit of sparkle that um, just adds a little something without bulking up your card if you're going to mail it. Okay? And so, yes, this paper is just so beautiful in person. I think you need to see it in person. Like, I'm looking on my screen, and you can't even tell that this flower is petal pink. It just it's, it looks so white on camera and in the catalog. So, what do you think? Do you like this paper? The favored flowers? I'm really, really liking it with the um, fresh freesia. Okay. Next up, again, very simple card. You could, you know, add a flower behind it. You can cut out one of those little flowers and kind of pop it up. But I just wanted a very simple card to showcase the paper and how quick you can make a card with that paper. Okay. Yes. So I think, you know, I'm my favorite designer series papers are changing because my favorite was the last one here, the dandy designs, but I'm really liking the dainty flowers now. Okay, so here we have two stamp sets. One is a level one with um, a $50 purchase and the other one is a level two with a $100 purchase. So they have some great samples here. Let me show you what I did with In the Country. Again, not my my really style of um, stamp set, but I did find this beautiful simple card online. Oh, I can't remember. It, it was posted on our demonstrator Facebook group. So demonstrators kind of post their projects to share, to show people like, hey, make, use this card for your classes. And um, I just used soft suede ink on very vanilla cardstock. I stamped it once on the focal point and then put the soft suede layer behind that and then I stamped it twice on the card base so it kind of makes it look like a whole landscape. The stamp set that I used as my greeting is from the mini catalog, the Happy Labels. I wouldn't have really thought to pair this with that but I just like the saying you are my happy place because a nice little country landscape. Okay and um this is shown with a coordinating punch. So this is a label punch that kind of has a ticket edge or like a washi tape look. So it's kind of fun. You can use it with designer series paper or your labels, um, or you can just get the greeting stamp set. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to check some comments. Um, yes, paper does all the work. Where is this Wink of Stella? The Wink of Stella is in the annual catalog and oh my goodness it's probably under coloring ink and coloring glitter and more page 128 let's see if it's on there yes it's on page 128 right there you can kind of see how they use it on the butterfly or i'm sorry dragonfly okay clear glitter brush Glitter brush for accenting stamped images. Brush tip creates both thick and thin lines. So if, if you do put it over um, something stamped in our classic ink, you want to kind of do it quickly because it will make it kind of bleed if you put too much on. But it really doesn't. I mean, it's it's really great. I use it all the time. Okay, so here is back to the in the country. There are two images in it, and there's one... I thought that was like a um, a very simple card. And here is the other one that I stamped on the craft note cards, which these come with a box, which is great. I didn't even, in the it's in the annual catalog and it's amazing. I didn't even know there was a box. It comes flat. So you can make a bunch of cards and stick them in here. I believe a gift card, you know, those gift cards that are on the racks in the, um, grocery store that would fit in here as well okay so there are my little samples I also had my uh, I practiced 
practiced. This is no line water coloring. Let me lift this up a little bit. No line water coloring. So I stamped that image in um, Sahara sand. So you could use crumb cake, you know, so a light color. And then you go over it with ink and your watercolor brush. So it's called uh, no line watercoloring. So it's kind of like trying to be an artist, <laughs> a watercolor artist, but you have a guide. Okay. So this is my first attempt. I didn't even get to make a card with it, but, but we'll see. I thought this card really lended itself to that. Okay. So that is the in the country. And someone asked about how this punch works on paper. I'd be happy to show you. You take, I think it's a half inch, three quarters of an inch, and um, an inch. And with these um, punches, you slide your strip of paper in, and you can flip it over if you want to make sure that it is flush. And then you punch and you get that edge. I thought this would be beautiful. Hold on. I had a, I had a special strip on purpose to use this. Hold on. <laughs> this is some of the Dandy Designs paper and um, you can get a washi tape look with it with any of your designer series paper. It punches that edge. It looks like it's torn tape. Let's see. Let me grab a piece of white something. Okay, if you can see that edge. All right. I'll um, show you more of that when we get to our little dandy designs card. Okay, so that is in the mini catalog with happy labels. Okay, and then the beautifully happy stamp set. Like I said, I went to a demonstrator event. We do a shoebox swap. Here is the card that my demonstrator friend Kathy had for us. And what's really great about this stamp set is it's a two-stepper, which I love two-step stamping. Now, on the um, in the brochure and in the stamp case, the images are smaller than they actually are. So this will take up most of your focal point. And I'm just going to quickly show you about two-step stamping. It's been around a long time, but with the photopolymer, it's even easier. Okay, so real quick, I put my clear stamp on there. Let's get this out of the way. I'm taking my Memento black ink because it's nice and dark and black. You could use stays on, but actually the stays on black I don't really like using it on my um, photopolymer because it really stains it and it's solvent based ink and so it could break down the stamp. So you're better off using the Memento ink. I am going to pull, I had my, there we go. Since it is a photopolymer stamp, it doesn't have that cushion. So I'm pulling out my cushiony mat here. This is in the annual catalog if you don't have a mat. You could use a stack of papers or your catalog, but you just want something cushiony, okay? And give it even pressure. The Stamparatus would work with this nicely because it's such a big stamp. There we go. I'm gonna close up my Memento Tuxedo Black. Again, this is what I use for the owls when we use the blends to color, okay? Now I have Granny Apple Green. And I'm going to grab the leaves. Put that out. Actually, the best way to put your um, stamp on the block is lay it flat with the image down and then pick it up with the block. Because sometimes if they're not so, if they're more delicate, then, you know, they're pliable. So they could go on crooked. So that's a little tip on how to do that. So I have my granny apple green here. And I'm going to make sure it is well inked. Another little tip I, you know, I kind of knew, I guess, but reiterated to me the other day. <laughs> Hold your ink pad down 
there's ridges and that way um, you'll get it well inked because sometimes if you're just going like this it's popping the ink pad and it's not gonna this is the first time I've used this so, um, so I just want to make sure it's really well inked okay and then I'm gonna line it up and hopefully my head is not in the way let's see here <laughs> Okay, and then you get this beautiful image. You get to color it without using any watercoloring contraptions. It's a two-stepper. I'm gonna clean that off so I can take it off and then I'm gonna grab the flower petals. This is the flower petal. And I am using Flirty Flamingo. ink that up and that is gonna go again trying to do my best you know I'm not right over it there we go but just like that and then what we did do hold that I think we used a light we just wanted a little bit more accent and so we took a blend and just added some more. And this is the light flirty flamingo blend to just add a little bit more color if you want. Oh, I dropped my marker. Okay. All right, so that's how we made that card. Okay. All right, how's everybody doing? Doing okay? It is time for our last make and take. How am I doing on time? 11.53, I see. So we have seven minutes. It's not going to take us seven minutes for our um, card there. So the last of your supplies. We're going to be using the Dandy Designs Designer Series paper. It's 48 sheets. So that's why it is a level two celebration item because it's a big stack of paper but it is just beautiful with the fresh freesia and the calypso coral and mango melody petal pink great um springtime colors as you can see here in the samples there's such a wide variety of things that they used it for um, these little candy cracker boxes are so cute it's a dye but unfortunately um, it's out of stock right now but um, you could do um, a candy box with just uh, a six by six piece of paper. And we're gonna make one of those at my celebration in person stamp camp, which is February 18th. It's on a Saturday, one to four, down at JJ Twigs in Wakanda. So um, we're gonna be using this paper along with um, other products from the celebration brochure and the mini catalog. Okay, so Dandy Designs. So many patterns, and they're so great because they're small patterns. Okay, so you want your petal pink card base, and then you have three strips of designer series paper. Then you have a tag that I stamped, again, with that um, something fancy. It's my favorite new favorite sentiments some of the petal pink ribbon so um i have this at another sample so you can actually get to feel it right now and there is a little circle hopefully the little circle didn't get lost if it did you know it's just a little little something all right is everybody finding their supplies the tag comes from a die set it's in the annual catalog, Tailored Tags, I believe it's what it's called. And I think it just works great with your different sentiments and making quick and easy cards. If you were with me, or maybe you've seen on my Facebook page, back in 2020, we did what was called a double wonder. And so we used um, two pieces six by 12 and cut them up in different ways to make very quick and easy cards. And that's what I did with this one as well. It's not the same measurements, but your strips are 
one and five eighths by four. Again, remember I said I cut my strips of 12 by 12 paper into four. So this is just kind of how I first start out with my, um, with my paper to make cards. Okay, so does everybody, is everybody ready? Does everybody have their, their <laughs> supplies for our card? Okay, any other questions? Okay, so this is a petal pink card base that you're gonna fold. Now my sample, I took my three pieces of paper here, and you know what? They're double-sided. So actually, this one, you know, if you wanna keep them um, the same like that, you can or do what I did and have the plaid and the stars. Maybe you like the hexagons instead of the lines, but that's what um, the designer series paper are two, has two sides. I'm going to grab my liquid glue here. This is our multi-purpose Tombow liquid glue. I have a little mason jar here that this is how I store it on my desk so that the glue is at the bottom. Um, there's two different tips. There's that small pen tip, and then the broad tip, which is kind of like, ends up being like a glue stick. You squirt some glue and then you uh, spread it around. I like to use the pen tip, and so that's why I have it stored like that. Now, my sample here has my three pieces of designer series paper. Um, flush with each other. You could spread them out so that there is a nice border around all three of them. My tip for that is I usually go with the first one in the middle and then the ones on the sides. If you don't like your card landscape version like this, you could certainly turn it this way and make it portrait version. I'm gonna keep it uh, landscape version here. Now you can make them flush, you can have a little border, or you can do what I'm gonna do this time, and I'm gonna make them crooked on purpose, just because it's kind of fun, okay? And you just gotta kind of play around with it, you know, kind of let the, the panels fall where they may, <laughs> and that's why I, I like to use the liquid glue on this because they um, you'll have a little more time to move them about if that makes sense I'm just going to kind of put that one crooked it's just kind of fun especially with the birthday card it's like the confetti falling Okay. See what I mean? How you can kind of shimmy it around. You know, there's too much on that side. There we go. Okay, so I'm interested. Are you making it nice and flush? Are you making a border around? How are you putting your panels down? Or are you going the very crooked on person purpose, let them fall where they may? <laughs> so again, nice quick and easy cards. Let the paper do all the work for you. Love this saying, I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching it out. I'm just stretching out the celebration. I am a little notorious for late birthday cards or sometimes not even getting them at all. I'm trying to be better, trying to be better. Okay. And I'm going to use just a couple dots on my circle there. Oops, it fell. There's still enough and you don't even have to put that on if you don't want to. Let's rub that off. Okay, I am gonna use dimensionals on my tag. Okay, border straight, flush with border. I see how you're putting your card together. Flush with border. Okay, I use this little ribbon as just a 
um, topper, if you will. And, oh my gosh, I can't even remember how I put that down. I might have used a glue dot. One of my favorite tricks, though, with ribbon like this on the back of something. So I'm just going to fold it in half, lay it down here. And I took some of my tear and tape. You could use just scotch tape too, but I just always have this on hand. And I'm not going to peel off the backing. I'm just going to hold it down there. And um, it's popping up right now, but it'll be fine once I put on my card. And I'm sorry I didn't send you any sequins. That was just kind of hard to to get in the mail. And I think I need to trim my banner there. So it fits on the card. And go this way. Oops. But don't you love the feel of this ribbon? I love the texture of it. It's kind of like almost sweetie. Now, here's another thing. Are you going to put your tag on straight? Or are you going to be crooked? I'm still going to be crooked. You know, and you can put it down here. You can put it up here. It doesn't have to be in the center. It can be wherever you want it to be. And then grate my favorite. I'm, um, just to step it up a little bit. I'm going to get my tool here, my you pick tool. This is a great tool if you like embellishments because you have a little gummy side on one end and a poker or a spatula on the other. I needed the spatula for one of the embellishments I was using the other day. It's a little bit easier to pick up. Um, and I'm going to use the gold again. And these come a little bit differently than they have in the past. The small ones are on one sheet and the large ones are on another. I'm gonna grab a large one, put it right there. Grab the small one. Remember you want uh, odd amounts. I usually do three, but I stepped it up with this one. This lucky person gets five embellishments. <laughs> okay. There we go, very simple birthday card. All right, and I think that's all. Um, I do wanna say that this cute little bunny punch would be so great with the um, Fun Designer Series paper here. Let me go this way. And then go this way. And again, we're gonna use this at my celebration stamp camp in person in February. Hopefully I can see some of you there, okay? If you love this bunny punch, I would suggest getting it sooner rather than later. I know Easter and spring is kind of far away, but unfortunately some of these things, like, like the punches come from overseas, so they might be out of stock for when you wanna use them. Like that heart punch is not coming into stock until April, which is kind of sad. Okay. So that's that. One last thing I wanted to show you. Maybe a couple last things. Here is, in the back of the um, celebration brochure, we have our hostess celebration brochure. So if you are a hostess, you can be your own hostess. You can gather um, orders. A hostess um, order is $150 or more. So it can be all on one order. Um, and then when you have a host order, you can get host rewards and there are host only items. So this is the celebration one, but this is um, free with a $300 host order. So if you have friends at stamp, you should get together your orders and then that way, even if you just have this one set for all of you, this would make a great no line watercoloring. I have some samples of the where did my mini catalog go? Everything gets thrown all over. <laughs> this is new paper. These were from my from my demonstrator event we had the other day. Um, this is in the back of the mini catalog. This is available through April. This is a hostess only designer series paper. That's what we used on that fun birthday card. 
This is from the annual catalog, the Begin With the Dream. Maybe you saw my post on that. This is another one from the annual catalog, a host-only stamp set. This is made with the designer series paper in the annual catalog. This is a fun card that just uses the designer series paper. Sometimes, you know, it's so beautiful, you don't want to cover it up. So that's a fun one. Okay, and that is that. And one, I, I keep saying that is that, and I'm done. But then I say, oh, I, I, there's something else I wanted to tell you. <laughs> if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, um, did you know that you could purchase a subscription and change it over? And then that way you can, if you don't want to buy um, anything else that you're just a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, take advantage of that and get a subscription and you can get celebration items. I'll be happy to walk you through how to um, set up your subscription. Let's see, I'm going to put this up. I think I'll put this on my Facebook page. Okay, so it's just a way to get celebration items. Okay, um, I am a Paper Pumpkin subscriber because I just love having easy cards to put together. Uh, next month's is uh, coordinates with the Rain or Shine suite, which is fun with the turtles and the fox and the pigs and the frogs. And there's even a die add on offer. Okay, so that is for next month's Paper Pumpkin. You would subscribe before February 10th. If you are interested in the subscriptions and you kind of don't understand how it works, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, and then the other thing in the celebration brochure is you get to see the Boho Blue Mini Cut and Emboss. This is really a great... Um, deal. If you need some supplies and you don't have a mini cut and emboss, you can get one with um, your starter kit. So for $129, you can get $175 worth of products from the annual catalog or the mini catalog. And you get a cut and emboss machine, which is amazing. It's not the full size. It's a little mini, which many things fit through there, except the larger dies or the large embossing folders. But for $129, you can get either the Boho Blue, which is an exclusive color during celebration, or the original white one. Or if you already have a machine or you don't want the little mini, you can still just get um, this $175 worth of your products of your choice for just $99. That's our normal starter kit. So they're just throwing in some extra goodies, extra amounts that you can choose. And that is through the end of February. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me with any questions. Okay, thank you for joining me. Sorry we went a little bit over. And I hope you had fun creating your cards if you were able to get those supplies. And if not, maybe you are inspired to make um, make some more cards. I'm going to pull off, pull up our cards that we made real quick. There they are, and this one too, okay? And I have one last question for you all. Which one is your favorite card that we made today? The Nothing Fancy Just Love, the birthday one, or the um, flowers here with the sympathy? Do you have a favorite? And hopefully, um, hopefully you feel inspired to recreate these with things that you have or things that you will get have. Okay, Judy, you asked, how do you sign up for my YouTube um, channel? If you go to YouTube and you can search for Simply She Stamps or Julia Mazur, my channel should pop up. And then there's a button somewhere that says subscribe. And all you need to do is click subscribe. And um, maybe you uh, are wondering, why are we talking about YouTube? Well, I can post my Facebook live lives on YouTube, but I can't go live on YouTube. And, you know, sometimes Facebook's a little, uh, I don't know, having some issues sometimes. And so I'd like, to, and not everybody's on Facebook. So I'd like to do my live videos on YouTube. So in order to do that, I need 50 subscribers. You don't need to pay for anything. You just click subscribe. And my YouTube channel is Simply She Stamps dash Julia Mazur. I think you can find me or if you do just at Simply She Stamps that 
that should pop up too. Um, also, my link for it is on my Stampin' Up! website, which is www.jmazer.stampinup.net. There's my links to my Instagram, uh, Facebook group, and yes, I am stamping in my slippers today. <laughs> and um, my YouTube link is up there as well. So, uh, and my calendar is on my Stampin' Up! website. So again, that's jmazer.stampinup.net. You can find everything there. You can even RSVP for um, stamp camps and classes. Uh, next week, I'm at the township making Valentine's. If you want to come on by, it's a free event. Everything um, <laughs> is provided for. So I'd love to stamp with you in person. And I do have some other uh, virtual ones. Thanks, Michelle and Kaylee. I'm glad you all like the cards. And Kristen, yes, in your PJs. I got out of my PJs, but I'm still in my... Uh, Slippers. My husband told me to get out of my PJs. I was tempted, but. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you are inspired. As always, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Okay. Bye bye. Have a great day.